Level 10, Upgrade. Hey guys, Tristan here, and today we'll be installing the RPM, T-Max, and Emax rear bulkheads. And of course, I have them in black. So without further ado, let's get them installed. Alright, so let's see what we have inside the package. So, and I'm going to need some scissors. Cut this bad boy open. I, have, I need to get a new pair of scissors. These aren't all that sharp. But inside the package, we have both bulkheads in the RPM Special Nylon, the instruction manual, and then we have hardware and stickers and the person that packaged it. First off, what we're going to do is remove all four tires, and each of them is held on with a single 8mm wheel nut. With all four tires removed, next up what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the rear bumper and it's held on with four screws. We got two on this side and then there's going to be two on the other side. I will also be removing the top two screws of the front bumper. There's one on each side. This way I can remove the roll cage. Next we're going to start removing all the cables and wires going to the engine. First one I'm going to pull is going to be the Easy Start Glow Plug Lead which comes right and off with a little force. Then I'm going to be taking this little silicone tube, so let move it down so I can start working off the telemetry heat sensor. Once you get that off, I'm going to pull this little clip that holds the air filter on. Just pull that right on off, pull it out, and pop it off just like that. Next, I will unplug the motor for the ES Easy Start system. These come off just like that, and then I will pull the fuel line right on off. Next up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the little carburetor link that goes to the carburetor arm right here. So, all we're going to do is we're going to take our little tool, push it through this little gap right here, and then use some force to pop it off. There we go. Next, we'll be retaking the return line and removing it from the exhaust, and then we'll also be re unscrewing this little grub screw right here. The last thing we need to do before we can remove the engine is unscrew the four screws that hold it to the engine mount. You can easily see these two on this side, but there's also two more on the other side, directly at the same spot, just you can't see them because of all the other parts. Now that all that is done, we can now remove the engine. That's easily done by pulling up the exhaust just like that, tilting the engine forward and out. So now we can set this off to the side. Now that the engine's removed, we can go back to removing the rear end. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove both the central and the rear skid plates from RPM. The central is held on with six screws, four in the middle, and two back here on the skid plate. And then the RPM rear one is held on with four screws, two here and two here. With all the screws removed, the two skid plates come right on off. And all that's left to remove are two screws of the aluminum skid plate. With the remaining two screws removed, the skid plate comes right on off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the dry shafts, which it's kind of hard to see, but you're going to need to turn the drive shafts so that you can see the grub screw at down these two grooves, and then when you do, you can take your tool and screw them out. With the drive shafts removed, we can now remove the tow links and the tow link brace, and they're held on with two screws. With the tow links removed, we can now go on to removing the A-arms. And depending on which uh, type you have, you either have the king pin and E-clips, or you have the king pins that you just screw on. So depending on which one you have, it makes it very easy or very difficult. So since I have the E-clips and pins, I'll be removing them from the rears. But if you just have the ones that you just screw in place, you just gotta screw them out and pull them out. It's very easy. With the arms removed, all that's left to do to remove the suspension is to remove the four screws that hold the shock tower in place. The shock tower removed, we can now take the suspension and put it off to the side. And next up what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the bulkheads and differential from the chassis and it's held on with just four screws. This is why we had to remove the engine because the engine was blocking these four screws. With the four screws removed, Bulkheads along with the rear diff come right on off. 
and all we have to do to separate the two is it's by popping them off. Be sure not to mess with the orientation of the rear diff. If you mess with it and you flip it upside down, well, your tires will go in the wrong direction. So just be sure to keep this in the right orientation. Now, with that out of the way, we can now take the new rear bulkheads and we can compare and contrast. So now I can tell you right now, they look very similar to what the front looked like, aside from the extra hole for the tow link. The, um, this area has been filled in just like before. On the outside, inside they got rid of the whole X mark right here for the support. They've added some more support around here and up here. Um, looks like they've done a little work down here. Kind of, They've actually hollowed it out probably for uh, weight. You know, just to keep weight from building up. But overall it looks pretty the same to me as it did for the front. Uh, and compared to the old one, it looks a lot better. So, next up what we're going to do is we're going to start assembling these onto the RC. So, like before on the front bulkheads, what we're going to do is we're going to take two nylon locking nuts and insert them into the grooves with the rounded edge facing down. That way the flat edge is facing towards the bottom of the chassis. They're kind of an annoyance to get in place, but once you get them in there, you're all good. Just like this. So now what we're going to do is RPM has included three sizes of screws. Uh, we got 20, 22, and 25. The 20 and 22 we'll be using. The 25 you can discard or save for a different RC. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bulkheads and our rear diff. We're going to slide them in place, just like so, so they're sa it's sandwiched in between both bulkheads. So we're going to take the drive shaft and slide it in place, just like that. We're going to set this in place, then we're going to flip this RC completely over. Then we're going to screw in the four screws that hold the bulkhead to the chassis. With the bulkhead secured in place, we can now take the rear suspension, slide it right on over, and screw in the four screws that hold the shock tower in place. Next we'll take the A arms, slide them into their places. And when they are in place, we're going to take their the pins for them, and we're going to slide them through. With the A-arms installed, we can now install the tow links, and that's easily done by taking the two links, setting the little brace on over, and then screwing the two screws that hold them in place. With the tow links in place, we can now take the drive shafts, and we can guide them on to the post of the rear differential. And once it's on there, we can use the little hole that's up on top of the bulkhead. And we can use that to guide the grub screw in place. With the drive shafts attached, we can now take the skid plate, put it on over where it goes, and then we're going to screw in the two screws on the very front of the skid plate. Next we're going to take the central skid plate, lay it over, and we're going to screw in the six screws that hold in place. We've got two back here, and then the four in the middle. Now it's time for the fun part. We're going to be taking our skid plate, lying it on over just like that, and taking one of the screws that they provided us with, as well as one of the nylon nuts that they have sent. You're going to want to put it on your finger just like that and carefully get underneath and then try and get it to the spot without dropping it. This is by far the most annoying part of this upgrade is trying to get under there and in place just like that. We're going to screw it down this screw. We're going to be doing the same thing for all four screws. Now it is time to reinstall the engine. All we have to do is take the whole assembly, 
slide it on over just like that set it down and make sure the exhaust goes on its little post again and then it's time to start plugging everything back in first we need to secure the engine in place and that's easily done by screwing the four screws that hold it on there's two on this side and there's going to be two on the other side but those you cannot really see with the engine in place we can now take the pressure line and slide it onto the exhaust pipe just like that then we can take a 2.0 hex drive and we're going to screw down the grub that holds the resonator in place next what we're going to need to do is pop the throttle linkage back onto the carburetor and that's just easily done by applying pressure to the lift side until it pops on there we go a little more pressure, and I'm sorry you guys couldn't see, but yeah. With everything in place, we can now start plugging everything else back in place. First, what we're going to do is we're going to take the fuel line and slide that into the carburetor. Then we're going to take the easy start plugs and plug them into the motor. Just like that, we're going to take the temperature sensor, slide it onto the fins, then we're going to adjust the little silicone pipe so it's nice and tight. Then we're going to take the glow plug igniter and push it onto the top of the glow plug. Alright guys, with the engine and everything else installed, we can now move on to installing the rear bumper. It's easily done. First, what we're going to do is we're going to take the brace for the bulkhead and slide it into place down below. Then I'm going to take my roll cage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the rear bumper, slide it in place, then we're going to screw in the four screws that hold it on. There's two on this side and two on the other side. All that's left is to take the four tires and put them into place. Each one of them is held on with a single 8mm wheel nut. Here is before. Alright guys, and here it is after. Now before I say anything, yes I know I reused an old here is before clip from when I did the front end of this RC. I apologize, I had forgotten to do the here is before in when I first started doing this upgrade. My bad. But, on to the actual art part. As you guys can see, it looks a lot better back here. The black just makes it so much nicer looking not to mention it's uh, RPMs nylon plastic which is a lot more durable a lot more flexible and it's gonna last a lot longer the uh, old bulkheads I actually were looking at and they're actually cracked in some some areas um, but now that those are out of the way they're pretty good so and as you guys can see I uh, did put in the modified bulkhead brace into the roll cage that makes that way you don't see those nuts anymore and I did put washers in as well just to help with the spacing um, other than that guys I do want to say eventually I will be doing a product review of the whole roll cage itself so keep an eye out for that if you're interested in this kind of roll cage and want to hear my thoughts other than that guys I'll see you all next time and that was Goliath's level 10 upgrade.